let's begin configuring our warehouse. In this part, we'll review basic settings of a warehouse inventory needed to prepare our warehouse for order processing. To get into Warehouse Settings, go to Products tab and select Settings. In this section, we'll start with the inventory. Remember that Baselinker system is made up of inventories and warehouses. An inventory is superior to a warehouse, so within one inventory, we can have several warehouses. An inventory by default should be a collection of products. If you're creating a new inventory, then it should consist of products that are not in any other inventory. If you want to hold varying stock levels within one inventory, then you simply add an additional warehouse to the existing inventory. So to summarize, an inventory is a specific list of specific products, which can have several stock levels at once thanks to the ability to add multiple warehouses within one inventory. To edit an inventory, we need to click on the three dots icon over here on the inventory list and select Edit Inventory. To add a new inventory, we click on Add Inventory. Here we can set up the inventory name. Let's call this one A. An inventory description. We can add additional languages to our inventory. For example, we can choose German and select which one of these will be the default one. Then we decide whether stock reservation should be switched on. Enabling this setting means that the stock is reserved the moment an order comes into Baselinker and stock level goes down. A confirmation of this order happens at a stage chosen by us. We set this up in the main Baselinker settings. If we choose No, then the stock level will decrease only once the order has been processed. Next, we need to decide if we want to allow for negative stock levels. Will it be possible in our inventory for stock level to go below zero? We allow or block this here. In the last section, we decide whether within this inventory, we want to keep a strict storage control, which means that every warehouse change, delivery, sale, or warehouse stock transfer will be documented. This option can be switched on and off at any point, and we will discuss it further in another lesson in this chapter. For now, we won't be turning the strict stock control on for this inventory, so we just click Save. At this point, we can see two inventories. Let's have a look at the warehouse list. In the Warehouses tab, you see all added warehouses. For the wholesaler and store to be visible here, the synchronization needs to be set up from the store or wholesaler to Baselinker. Remember that each store integrated with Baselinker, as well as each wholesaler, is a separate warehouse, a separate storage, and it will be visible on this list. You can add a new warehouse at any time. Let's call this one B. We can input its description, its address, postcode, and city. Enable or disable product stock edition, then select the default inventory. Let's select the newly created inventory A, then click Save. At this point, we have two warehouses, so within one inventory, we have two storage places. To check this, let's go back to the product list, and here at the top, you can see we have all available inventories, the default one and inventory A. Considering these have completely different products, in the A inventory, we don't have any products yet, but we have products in the default inventory. Here we only have one warehouse, so we can't choose a different one, but if we go back to inventory A, then here we can see both of our warehouses. Because we have here the default one, the main one which is automatically added when creating an inventory plus warehouse B, which is the one we just created. Going back to the inventory list, we can add our new warehouse to the default inventory. So in the inventory settings, once the warehouse is added, we can, on the inventory list, add this newly created warehouse to this inventory. Don't forget to hit Save. And now, on the product list, if we select the default inventory, we'll be able to see our two warehouses here. They will have their own separate stock levels. Therefore, if I manually change the quantity of this product here to five units in the default warehouse, and then switch to Warehouse B, the stock level here will remain at zero. Further in settings, we can choose price groups. Right now, we have one price group set up in GBP. We can add another group. 
Let's call it Euro. We can add a description and choose the currency. It's a standard price group. We differentiate three types of price groups. A standard one, where we can change prices manually. A linked one, where the price is calculated based on a price of the product in another group, plus a multiplier, and an add to price option. We choose what should happen to bundle pricing, whether a bundle price is determined individually or whether it should be calculated automatically based on components of the bundle. We'd like for this to be set up individually. We add this price group to both inventories and click Save. Now when we return to our product list and go into any product to the Sales and Storage tab, we'll be able to see two price groups, the default GBP one and Euros, so each product can have two prices. Going back into Settings, following price groups, we've got Categories. Categories are downloaded automatically if you're creating a warehouse in Baselinker based on products from an e-store. If you are importing listings from a Marketplace account and create products based on those listings, then you can decide if this import will also create your categories. You can also add categories manually by clicking Add Category and simply inputting its name. You can edit each category or delete it. Next up are manufacturers. You can add them manually, or they can also be added during a product import. Then we have suppliers and payers. You need to add suppliers here if you want to use the shipment services through Baselinker. We'll talk about shipments in further lessons. But before you can prepare a shipment, you have to add a supplier, and you have to also add payers. To add a supplier, click Add a Supplier, Input its name, fill out its details, choose the default currency, what product cost should be taken, and what product code. Is it a SKU or an EAN, or maybe a supplier-specific product code? We can also select a default printout template. We'll talk about these more in another lesson, but all you need to remember is that we set up printout templates separately for warehouses to those for the Baselinker system. Across the whole system, we recognize four types of printouts for orders, products, deliveries, and stock takes. In this drop down menu, you'll only be able to see those printouts we've created for deliveries printouts. We need to enter the supplier's email and where to email copies, then save all changes before we add a shipment. Additional fields. Here you can add additional fields which will be visible on the product card. The additional fields which we can add have the following options. It can be a short field or a long field. When it comes to short fields, we can choose a text box, a number, a drop down list, a check box, and option button, a date, or we can download a file into our product card. Let's choose a drop down list. Once a list is chosen, we need to add the values each one in a new line. For example, one, two, three, four. We hit save. We add the next field. We'll call it B. And now let's choose a checkbox and set its value to, for example, OK. We save and add another text field. Let's call it C. It will be a short field, and this time let's choose File and Save. Let's add one more additional field and call it D. Select a short field, and now let's choose this time a date and of course, save. And now, if we go back to our product list and go into any product, then in this first section on the very bottom, we'll be able to see all of our additional fields. We can upload a file from our disk, set a date, Remember that this date will apply to this product in general and not a particular unit of this product. It can, for example, be an expiry date. We can check this checkbox here and choose an option from the drop down list. Basically, you add these additional fields if you're missing something specific on the product card. 
you're missing something in the Sales Products tab, or if it's not a parameter, but you'd like this information to be visible on the product card. The last tab in the product card is Logs. Here, you'll see a list of inventory settings logs, a list of deleted products, a list of deleted purchase orders, and a list of deleted stock takes.